Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Let's give God a hand of praise this morning. <clears throat> Please uh, stand for our call to worship. After that, we will have a selection from the choir, a hymn. And uh, then morning prayer from Deacon Mike Heath Scott. I'm sorry, we'll have a praise dance ministry after the morning prayer. Uh, uh, let us begin. Uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall be inherit the earth. 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Say, satisfied. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the of you. seated.
Give God a hand of praise for such a meeting. <clears throat> and now we have two young ladies coming for our praise dance. I'm sorry, a morning prayer. Good morning, church. With the love of God, we come before your presence, God, for we know that you are here with us. For you are the one that created this earth and everything that lives in it, oh God. And we always feel the wind blowing, and we know that it's you because you say you never leave us nor forsake us. And right now, as we feel the air condition, oh God, we know that you created that also. You are present with us, oh God. For you are our God. And we know that you love us. For you are not a liar. But the spirit of truth, oh God. And we just ask you to bless everyone that's here this morning. Bless them with your presence. Let your anointing fall down on them, oh God. For we are all a child of God. And we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Scott. We will now be blessed with two young ladies for our praise dance ministry. Let's give God a hand of praise.
was wrong with the number of ladies doing it, but she, she did the work of two ladies uh, with such poise, finesse, and grace. Let's give God a hand. <laughs> we serve a mighty God. We'll now have, thank you, thank you so much, but we will now have another selection and then a sermon from the Word of God from Pastor Stanley M. Jacobs. Our pastor.
Heavenly Father, we know that your spirit does the work. Your spirit produces the fruit. And so we continue to pray that your spirit will teach us and transform us into the image of Christ as we open your word together. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Living in light of the last days. Second Timothy chapter 3, the Apostle Paul writes to his son in the ministry, Timothy, a young pastor in Ephesus, and he says, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. Yeah. Then at verse 13, he says, but evil people and imposters will flourish. They will deceive others and will themselves be deceived. But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. Isn't it amazing that Paul writes centuries ago, but he so adequately describes the times in which we are presently living. And so we can see from Paul's description that we are living in light of the last days. The last days actually began at the ascension of Christ, and they will end when he returns. So we're in the midst of these last and evil days. They really are very difficult times. Many days, it's, it's really hard to watch the news. Murder, violence, shootings, racism, political corruption, lies, and on and on and on it goes. Paul said they're just very difficult times. Somebody once said that the living, living the Christian life would be easy if it wasn't for people. <laughs> and Paul says evil people and imposters will flourish. But then he says to Timothy, but you must remain faithful. He's speaking that same word, that same charge is for us. How do we live with this understanding, this knowledge, this comprehension that these really are the last days? That time is giving way to eternity. That God is at work in human history bringing to completion his whole plan of salvation. The hand of God is moving in human history. How do we live? How do we cope with all that's going on? Certainly God has an expectation of his church or we wouldn't be here. 
Certainly God has a purpose in mind for those of us whom he has entrusted with life during these difficult times. How do we represent God in an age like this? Well, first of all, he says to Timothy, remain faithful. To the Corinthian church, the second letter, Paul said, we walk by faith and not by sight. To the Galatian church, the third chapter, he said, no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, for it is evident that the just shall live by faith. And then the inspired writer of the Hebrews letter, he writes, it was the, by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely, who diligently seek him. So what is faith? Faith, brothers and sisters, is the confident assurance that God will keep his word. Yes, God will keep his word. Whatever God has said, listen, God will surely do. God is not slight concerning any of his promises. And so we can rely on God's word in these very difficult times because we know that God is a keeper of his word. And so keep on walking by faith and keep on living by faith and keep on knowing that without faith it's impossible to please God. How do we live in light of these last days? We remain faithful, but also we, re we remain fearless. Paul, in his second letter to this same Timothy, in the first chapter, he says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love and sound mindedness. And then to the Roman church, chapter 12, Paul writes these letters so appropriate for us today and in light of these difficult times. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. This world has its own way of thinking. This world is a system. It's, it's, it's an evil, wicked system. It's, it's designed to be wicked. And, and yet we get surprised by the wickedness. It's, divine, it's, it's, it's designed to be evil. And yet we become astonished at the evil. The word of God, however, teaches us how to think biblically about life, about our circumstances, our situations. And we must think biblically. How do you think biblically? Well, you have to train your thinking. How do you train your thinking? One way, really the only way, to renovate your thinking, to train your thinking, is to, as Scripture teaches, let the Word of God abide within you richly in great abundance. You know what would happen if the word of God is living in you. It's a living word abiding in your soul. That same word will become 
a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. And the word of God will teach us how to make godly decisions. The word of God will train our thinking so that we won't be easily shaken by all the things going on in this wicked world in these last and evil days. Evil will perpetuate. It'll get worse and worse and you'll see more and more and, and you'll be surprised at the things that will happen in the world around us. Nations rising up against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms and people are uh, being tormented and killed. Look at Ukraine. And it's only the beginning in these last and evil days. But we, the people of God, the church of God, must remain faithful, knowing that God will keep his word. And he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And we must also remain fearless because God didn't call us to be fraidy cats. Yes. You know, when we were growing up, if you know, if you were scared of stuff, the kids would call you a fraidy cat. That's one of the worst things that remain fearless, but then also remain focused. Paul says to the Colossians, if, and this is one of those uh, Greek words, uh, syntax tells us that uh, this is a conditional phrase, but it's the type of conditional phrase in the Greek language where the if really means since. And so he's actually saying, since ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of the Father. Set your affection on the things above, not on the things on the earth. Why? Because we just described how things are on earth. People loving themselves and their money, boastful, proud, scoffing at God, disobedient, ungrateful, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, no self-control, on and on it goes. Don't focus on that. Don't get caught up in the behavior of the world. But instead, focus on Christ. Place your hope on things eternal. And hold on to God's unchanging hand. That's what the hymnologist says. Yeah. This wicked world system is passing away before our very eyes. Every day you wake up and you watch the morning news, the midday news, or the evening do news. It's evidence that this wicked system is passing away. God is judging this wicked world system, and here we are in the midst of it. And you say, how are we going to fare? How, how will we do, Pastor, with all that's going on in the very difficult time, gas approaching five bucks a, a, a gallon? How are we going to make it? We're going to remain faithful. We're going to remain fearless. And we're going to remain Focus. Yes. Because world events will continue to usher us out of time into eternity. Live with the realization that this is not the end. God has something way better than this prepared for his people. But we've got to move out of time into eternity. There was a man who loved to travel, and wherever he would travel in his spare time, he'd 
love to visit old cemeteries. I do my best to stay <laughs> away, old, new, in between. I, but he loved to visit cemeteries. He loved to read the headstones of old graves from way back. And, and he would take pictures of them. He just collect those, you know, it's just his hobby. But one day he was at this particular cemetery and, and he found this old grave. And the headstone had an interesting epitaph. It said, as you walk by, Think of me, for as you are, so once was I. And as I am, one day you'll be. So prepare yourself to follow me. The man looked at the headstone and he kept looking and he noticed underneath that somebody had come and scratched something in underneath and so he cleaned it off enough to read and he found that somebody wasn't satisfied with what was written on the headstone and so they added something and and they added this to follow you I'm not content for I must know which way you went oh here's the reality all of us Right now, this very moment, are headed in one direction or the other. There is no in-between. There is no straddling the fence. There is no I'll make up my mind later. Because to not make up your mind is to make a choice. And that choice is between heaven and hell. That choice is between spending eternity either in the presence of God or uh, eternally separated from God in darkness and torment. The scripture references there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth describing a horrific existence. Right now, this very moment, you either headed one place or the other. Say, well, how do you know you're going to heaven? If you have ever placed faith alone in Christ alone, if you have ever accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, trusted him that when he died on the cross, he paid your sin debt, and when God raised him from the dead, that debt was settled. You're saved. You're on your way to heaven. Yes, that got you saved. But if you never made a decision, or if you've been waiting to make up your mind, you don't get to, you know, that there's a false theology called purgatory. And some folk believe in purgatory that, well, you know, uh, uh, at the end, you get to go to purgatory and make up your mind. <laughs> no. You may be percolating, <laughs> but there won't be any purgatory. <laughs> listen, listen, all, all humor aside, it's the most serious, the most permanent, the most eternal decision you will ever make or fail to make, or keep putting off to another day and find out that that day is not promised. Do I have a church? Yeah. And so I plead to you today, as we live in light of these last days, not knowing when time will give way to eternity. Make sure that you made Jesus your choice. Yeah, yeah. You can do it even if you're here this morning and you've never made a confession of faith. You have the opportunity while the blood is still running warm in your veins, while you still have the power of choice. Isn't that an awesome, awesome, awesome blessing that God gives, the power of choice to choose? He doesn't make you. 
But oh, he just reaches out. He, yeah, he, yeah. he gives you a pastor with a message that hugs you yeah, yeah. and pulls you and urges you to make Jesus your choice. Yeah. God loves you. Yeah, yeah. And he's calling any and everyone who's not made a decision to make that decision because we are living in light of these last days. If you're here today and have not made that choice, you can make it today. We have counselors who can help you make that decision as we stand. Maybe you're here and you already know Christ as Savior, but you need a church home. Will you come today? Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. Just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. He will save. boxes are located all around the sanctuary for your convenience and use. We'll have our offertory prayer at this time. Father, we come asking you to bless those who gave and bless those who did not give. Father, we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Deacon Scott. If you're here today and this is your first time with us and you don't mind just giving us a wave, we'll do our best to make you feel welcome. We have some right in the center in the area here. We want you to feel welcome. Amen. We don't do all the things we were doing because of COVID and COVID is still around. And it seems like it's getting busy again. And so stay safe. Amen. Amen. Keep doing the things that will keep you safe. And I know we're going into year four. And uh, folk are just, just getting tired and sick and tired of being sick and tired of COVID. Uh, but yet, I keep up with the numbers. That's I, it's a responsibility I have as your leader. Amen. So I, I, I get the reports from the health our department, I even get the reports from the Marion County School System, and infections are starting to rise again. Uh, not as bad as before, but they are rising, and, uh, and uh, deaths, COVID deaths, are rising again. And so, uh, listen, uh, if you haven't received your vaccination or your booster, I encourage you. It's a personal choice. I just want to encourage you. Got my booster. Amen. I boosted up. Amen. <laughs> Reverend Collier and I went down there together and boosted. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, so uh, we, we're trying to stay here long as we can because we both the same age. Amen. I, I know he looks a lot younger than I do. <laughs> but but uh, we both the same age. Amen. Both of us are made babies. So uh, do all that you can. Uh, to stay safe. Don't give up on safe practices, simple as hand washing, social distancing. Uh, and even if you're vaccinated and you're in a, a, lot, a crowded place, wear your mask. Amen. You know, wear, wear your mask. If you, if you want a bunch of uh, strange people in a crowded place, wear your mask. If you're on the airplane, wear four or five. <laughs> you know, that's, there's no, there's no such thing as, as, as not enough precaution with this. Amen? I just felt uh, I needed to say that. Okay. Uh, our prayers are going out to Sister Barbara Brock in the passing of her brother. And I know she's uh, getting ready to go head up north uh, for that. I believe Brother um, 
uh, Warren has just returned. Amen. So uh, there are bereaved families. There are members who are uh, uh, sick, shut in, and recovering. And, and prayer is certainly in order for each and every one. Brother Herman Brown has some petitions for uh, a Democratic candidate out of Gainesville. Uh, she needs some uh, signatures by noon tomorrow uh, to qualify uh, to be on the ballot. And uh, uh, if you'll see him, uh, you can sign up if you're a registered voter. You need to be a registered voter uh, to sign the petition. Please do so. It doesn't hurt anything. It, it saves her a ton of money. Amen. And listen, we need good people to run for office. Because Paul just described some of those folk who up there. I wish I had somebody. We need some godly people in public office. And if, if it gets to a point where godly people are just, you know, throwing up their hands and not, you know, wanting to get involved with that process, what we'll, we'll be left with is uh, those crazy folk that are in office and doing crazy stuff. Yeah, that, that's, that's not a good way to say it, but it's probably accurate, more accurate than, you know, other ways I could have said that. Uh, but at any rate, there are some folk who are extreme people. They, are, they have extreme views and so forth. And, and, uh, and uh, the, 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 the political system is designed that you have to vote them out or you have to exercise your vote to keep them out. Because just sitting around complaining about it and saying, oh, look what they're doing, they, they, you know, that don't help anything. You know, so listen, if you're not registered, make sure you do that. Make sure you become informed and vote because our democracy is under attack. And if you don't be diligent, We'll wake up one morning and we'll have an authoritarian government with, with a king instead of a president, you know, who has control of the military and can, can tell you what time you got to go to bed and stay in your house and everything else. Amen? Amen. All right, better listen to the prophet. All right, okay, all right. Um, on the fifth Sunday, we will honor our graduating high school center uh, seniors during the uh, 10 o'clock service. We have four graduating seniors, and we'll honor them on the fifth Sunday. Uh, this past week, I turned 65. Amen. Amen. So uh, I received so many birthday cards and gift cards and uh, all kind, kinds of gifts and presents and so forth. It just made me want to live longer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to do that anyway, you know. <laughs> but it, you know what I mean. I, I was very touched by all that you all ha have done. And please let me say thank you because I'd be writing a while to try to get all those thank you cards out because there are so many uh, cards that uh, I received. Thank you so, so much. Uh, someone said, how does it feel to be retirement age? I said, well, I didn't know I was <laughs> at retirement age. Nobody told me I could retire, and so I guess I'll keep doing what I'm doing, amen, uh, for at least a, a little while longer, but I do have an exit plan. <laughs> amen? amen? Amen. You know, in the old Baptist church, the pastor just stayed there till he died. This is not the old Baptist church. <laughs> so at some point, you know, the Lord will say, okay, it's your time to, you know, and it will be my time to, you know, get out of the way of a younger person or, 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 or whatever the case may be. And so uh, I'm thinking in that, that way and, and working toward that. And so, you know, I just have to plant a seed, <coughs> amen, in your thinking. Amen. So that you understand that 
Reverend Jacob won't be here forever. I mean, that's kind of obvious, but sometimes you need to think about that. Amen? Amen? All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, that's it for me. My birthday twin coming now. <laughs> Look at him. Come on up here, Reverend. No, come on up here. No, no, can't, can't we pass for twins? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, next Sunday I'll turn 65. Don't we have a great pastor? God is so good. Uh, we have uh, so much to be grateful for. Uh, I was talking to Social Security last week and. Uh, <laughs> Retirement is not 65 anymore. It's, it's 66 and a quarter. 66 and a quarter. Times have changed. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, c c because you are so good. You're better than that. You're great, Lord God. We, uh, humble, we are humbled by your majesty, by your power, and by your grace. Lord, we lift up everyone in this church, every house, every family, name by name, house by house. And Lord, we know that we have the victory in you, and we depend on you, Father God. We lift up Pastor Jacobs and his family. We lift up every ministry, and we're thankful, Lord, that the ministries are starting to begin again. Even in spite of COVID, you're allowing things to happen, Lord God. So we thank you, Father. We thank you for the, the, uh, the, the vaccinations and the boosters that you, Lord, had made, had, have pos made possible. And Father, we thank you for your grace. Father, we pray, Lord, uh, uh, about Ukraine, that you take care of those people that are being oppressed and Lord, we know you do all things well, and we love you, Father. Father, we pray, Lord, for our children as summer comes, Lord, and uh, that you cover them in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you for all that you do. We pray for all the families, Lord, that are working and not working, for the ones that are bereaved, ones that are uh, sick, Lord God, and and are being under doctor's care, and the ones that are going into surgery or just came out of it, Lord God, every situation, every circumstance. We're ever so grateful for you, Lord God, and we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory, and we ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please stand for our benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.